Hello everybody and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker, and today we're doing a Kath famed Mechanist deck. This is a co-commander in the Energy Precon deck for Mono Horizons 3, and I'm very excited, so let's see exactly what Kath does. Kath famed Mechanist, one blue, red, white, ledger creature dwarf artificer with Fabricate 1. Fabricate is an ability that means this creature enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter, or you create a one one colorless servo artifact creature token. Pretty versatile. Then other non-token creatures you control have Fabricate 1. Then for two and tap, choose one, proliferate, or populate. Very cool commander, very unique deck. I found some very fun strategies while building this deck, and I found some cool cards that I think would be really big assets to this deck. So Kath here just cares about you creating tokens or making things bigger, or doing both, making a big board and then buffing it up. So our deck we have built has a little bit of everything in there, and I think you'll find some really unique stuff going on. So let's quickly look out how this deck is going to be laid out. First, we're going to be talking about modular menaces, all those modular creatures that we'll get into. Next is a category I call one thing leads to another. It's a bunch of things that from us just doing anything is going to trigger a cascading effect of abilities. And then finally, we have the good stuff that's going to help round out this deck. So let's dive right into those modular menaces with some of the best modular creatures. So modular creatures are going to become real clear once I get into them. But first off, we have Arcbound Crusher, Arcbound Overseer, and Arcbound Ravenger. So Arcbound Crusher, four generic artifact creature Juggernaut with Trample. Whenever another artifact enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Arcbound Crusher. And then it has Modular 1. So this creature enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. When it is put into a graveyard, you may put its plus one plus one counters on a target artifact creature. So basically we can recycle those artifact creatures, putting them onto, basically we can recycle those plus one plus one counters, putting them onto another modular creature, or maybe one of those servos we're creating. A lot of really cool things we can do, and Arcbound Overseer's next, eight generic artifact creature golem with at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature with modular you control, and it has modular six, meaning it'll enter with six plus one plus ones. And if we choose to, Kath will give it an additional. So I think that's where the best part of this is, is Kath's ability is going to make it so all of these get a little bit bigger. And then we can tap it to proliferate and make them all bigger every turn, making a giant board. And then Arcbound Ravenger, two generic creature beast with sack and artifact, put a plus one plus one counter on Arcbound Ravenger, and it has modular one. So we can do two things. We can sack those servos to make this thing bigger, and then dump all of those onto one of those servos if this were to die. A lot of really cool cards. Now let's look at three more of them with Arcbound Reclaimer, Arcbound Shikari, and Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp. So Arcbound Reclaimer, four generic artifact creature Golem with remove a plus one plus one counter from Arcbound Reclaimer. Put target artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. We're gonna have a lot of draw triggers whenever creatures enter and whatnot. So I think this is going to be a very powerful ability. Just putting any of those powerful artifacts, whether it's a creature or, you know, utility piece back on top. Now, Arcbound Shikari, one red, white arc artifact creature, cat soldier with first strike. When Arcbound Shikari enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other artifact creature you control. Very powerful there, sets us up to start proliferating with Kath. Then it has modular two, so it's a three three that enters with two one one counters on it, and then Kath can give it an additional one. So then lastly, we have Zabaz, the Glimmer Wasp, single generic legendary artifact creature insect with modular one. If a modular trigger ability would put one or more plus one plus one counters on a creature, you control that many plus one are put on instead. So it again will put another counter, making them even bigger. Then for a single red destroy target artifact you control, or for a single white, this gains flying until end of turn. Obviously here, if you pay the red, you can destroy another modular creature, put all the counters on Zebaz, and then for a single white, give it flying. Great evasion to get right through. So let's look at some of those other modular creatures I thought would be worth putting in this deck. Notably, there are more of them, but I had to cut some of them for some of the other cards I put in this deck, so you can go and look those up. But we have Arcbound Javelinier, Arcbound Mauser, Arcbound Prototype, Arcbound Slasher, Arcbound Slith, Arcbound Stinger, Arcbound Tracker, Arcbound Whelp, and Arcbound Worker. Very, very cool. So this next category, like I said, is going to be one thing leads to another. It's a bunch of abilities or things that we're going to be doing that just trigger all of these cards or cause all of these great fun things to happen. 
for this deck. But before we get into those, I just want to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. It would mean the world to me. So let's dive right in and look at the first category I'm calling too many triggers because I think we're going to get so many things going on. It's going to be a little overwhelming. So first we have Cathar's Crusade, Illusionist Bracers, and Panharmonicon. Cathar's Crusade is a three white white enchantment. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Notably here, if we choose to go servo route, we get a servo entering the battlefield. We'll buff up all of our things also. So you're basically getting the best of both worlds by also buffing up your entire board versus just putting a single plus one plus one counter on something. Very, very powerful. Illusionist Bracers, two generic artifact equipment. Whenever an ability of an equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. So notably here, Kath is going to let us double proliferate or double populate which I think is going to be well worth the cost of this card. And then Panharmonicon for generic artifact. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that triggers an additional time. We'll get into some of those more triggers later on here, the more we get into this category, but obviously we get to double up those abilities again, which is just so, so powerful. So next, I want to look at some good new triggers, notably some newer cards here that came out in the last couple years that I think really benefit from Kath's ability or can help benefit our entire board as a whole. So we have Anima Pakal Thousand Moon, Cyberman Patrol, and Filigree Vector. So Anima Pakal Thousand Moon is one red and white ledger creature human soldier. Whenever you attack with one or more non-golem creatures, put a plus one plus one counter on Anima Pakal, then create X 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Anima Pakal. Right off the bat, you can see we're going to use Kath's ability to instantly make this a little bit bigger and just start pumping out tons and tons of gnome artifact creature tokens. Along with all the other great abilities we have here, those tokens are just going to get more and more every turn, especially if they stick around and are going to be a real problem for our opponents. Then we have Cyberman Patrol, two generic artifact creature Cyberman with artifact creatures you control have afflict three. This card is going for under $10 and I think that this should be a $30 card. I have no idea why this is printed at uncommon, but afflict, if you don't know what that means, it says whenever creature with afflict becomes blocked, defending player loses three life. So all of those one ones we're going to be pumping out are just going to be either dealing damage or our opponents block them and they're still going to be losing life. At some point in the game, we just win whether we get through or not with Cyberman Patrol. This is a really good finisher card, so keep an eye on that. And then Filigree Vector, three and a white artifact creature, Phyrexian Construct. When Filigree Vector enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each of any number of target creatures and a charge counter each on any number of target artifacts. Then for a single colorless tap, sack another artifact and proliferate. A great way we can double proliferate with our commander. Then this, you know, getting two triggers will be very, very good. So now let's look at some ways to buff some creatures. Obviously, we're going to be making a ton of these little artifact creatures. Now let's look at some ways we can just make those even bigger and more of a threat. We have Illustrious Wonderglyph, Sentinel, Sarah Lyons, and Urza Prince of Krug. So Illustrious Wonderglyph, four and a white artifact creature golem with Ascend. Other artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two for as long as you have the city's blessing. And at the beginning of each upkeep, create a one, one colorless gnome artifact creature token. There's no doubt with being able to make a ton of servos whenever we cast creatures, we're going to hit Ascend whenever we can can cast this card. So very, very cool effect. Sentinel Sarah Lions, three red, white, ledger creature, human knight with haste. As long as an artifact enter the battlefield under control this turn, creatures you control get plus two, plus two. It has battalion, one of my favorite Boros abilities. When this and at least two other creatures attack, Sentinel Sarah Lions deals damage equal to the number of artifacts you control to target player. I mean, this could easily dome someone for 10 plus maybe 20 if you have enough artifacts on the board. So a very big threat there. And then Urza, Prince of Krug, two white, blue, ledger creature, human artificer with artifact creatures you control, get plus two, plus two. Awesome. Then six, create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 soldier creature in addition to its other types. Now, I don't really see this ability being too powerful, thinking about, you know, other artifacts, but you start looking at some of those expensive arcbound creatures, like arcbound overseer that just at the beginning of your upkeep buffs up all your modular creatures, and it becomes a lot more uh, worthwhile, in my opinion, to make copies of this stuff. So very cool effect there. 
And then lastly, the last category I want to talk about, I'm calling pingers for days. Anytime any of our stuff enters, we're going to be dealing some big damage. And I put a ton of these in the deck because we want to hit it as often as possible. So starting out, we have Impact Tremors, Ingenious, Artillerist, and Perforos, God of the Forge. Impact Tremors, one, and a red enchantment whenever a creature enters. This deals one damage to each opponent. Very devastating. The fact that we have six of these is just ultra devastating. Ingenious Artillerist is two and a red creature, human artificer, with whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under control, it deals that much damage to each opponent. So very similar to Impact Tremors, if we have four artifact creatures, or I guess artifacts in this case, enter, it's going to deal four to each opponent. And then Perforos, God of the Forge, three and a red legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible. As long as your devotion to red is less than five, this isn't a creature. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, this deals two damage to each opponent. And for two and a red creatures you control, get plus one plus zero until end of turn. Just a great way at the end of a game to play this, pump up all our creatures, and swing out with our massive board state. Then next up, we have Reckless Fireweaver, War Leader's Call, and Witty Roastmaster. Reckless Fireweaver is one in red creature human artificer. With whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under control, Reckless Fireweaver deals one damage to each opponent. Luckily, we're making all artifact creatures in this deck. Next, War Leader's Call, one red and a white enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, so it's part of a buff. Then whenever a creature enters battlefield under control, this deals one damage to each opponent incredible this card i've suggested in a lot of decks recently because it is just going to be really good for any token strategies and then witty roastmaster two and a red creature devil citizen with alliance whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control this deals one damage to each opponent so you can see we have a lot of repeated effects here but this is going to be a surefire way we beat out our opponents so let's read the rest of those cards with Goblin Bombardment, Idol of Oblivion, Lochelle Clockwork Scholar, Metastatic Evangel, Psy Masterthopterist, Steel Overseer, Tempered Steel, and Throne of Geth. So lastly, we've made it to the good stuff category, and I want to talk about some good stuff that I think would just be very helpful in this deck. First, we have Dispatch, Enthusiastic, Mechanaut, and Irenicus's Vile Duplication. Dispatch, single white instant to tap target creature. It also has Metalcraft that says if you control three or more artifacts, exile that creature. So it's basically a swords or path that doesn't give you any benefits, and we're definitely going to have doesn't give your opponents any benefits, and we're definitely going to have three or more artifacts on the board. Enthusiastic Mechanaut is a blue and a red artifact creature golem artificer. Artifact creature goblin artificer with flying and artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. There are some discount spells in this good stuff. I just want to show one of them off. And then lastly, we have Irenicus's Vile Duplication. Three blue sorcery created token that's a copy of target creature you control, except the token is flying and isn't a legendary if there's a creature that is legendary. And this is the last strategy I want to talk about in this deck, which is basically making a ton of copies, non-legendary copies of our commander. And whenever a creature enters, you get those triggers three, four, five times, you know, if you put enough of those cards in the deck. I think that that could be a very devastating way to build this deck by making a ton of servos, putting plus one, plus one counters on things, and then you just become an overwhelming threat so quickly if you can build the deck out like that. So very cool way. But let me read through the rest of those good stuff cards with Acroma's Will, Arcane Signet, Biden of Thassa, Boros Charm, Chromatic Lantern, Commander Sphere, Counterspell, Ethereum Sculptor, Flawless Maneuver, Generous Gift, Hour of Reckoning, Jessica's Will, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, Kappa Cannoneer, Organic Extinction, Path to Exile, Requisition Raid, Skull Clamp, Soul Ring, Thought Monitor, Thought Cast, Unbreakable Formation, and Urza, Lord High Artificer. And with that, I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think those modular creatures are the way to go, but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Was it a good idea to add those, or was there a whole other subtype of creatures that just work so much better? I would love to hear what you say. In addition, if you could share this with a friend, leave a like and subscribe. That would mean the world to me, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Now today's Scryfall card of the day is Dramoka Warrior. Dramoka has regard for the humans who serve under her. In return for her protection, they obey with steadfast loyalty, acting as weapons for her and her scale lords against other clans. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you later, planeswalkers.